thank you. Welcome back. My next guest tonight could be said to be simply passing through. In a day or so, she's off to Brazil with her bicycle. Once she gets there, she will cycle the four and a half thousand miles along the Trans-Amazonian Highway, a huge motorway which crosses the country. I don't know why she's going to do it. I hope she's now going to tell us all Louise Sutherland. <laughs> Now, why are you doing it? You're off your bike. You've got your bike, and we'll look at it in a minute when we get round to it. But you're off to pedal across South America. Right. Why? Well, partly because I'd love to try and see that road over there. And I don't think it's actually a highway, because then people think it's something like the M1 or something. But it's just a, a swathe through the middle of the jungle. And to my knowledge, nobody has ever actually cycled it before. And the other reason is that I want to uh, try and raise some funds as a result of doing this trip to build some clinics in eastern Peru because I've been over there working in eastern Peru with medical work. And so this is the two combined. I can enjoy the cycling and I can help the medical work in eastern Peru. You've got a lot, a lot of energy for a little one, I tell you. <laughs> well, now, you've, you've been there to Peru before. Yes. Uh, you went there to me specifically, did you? No, I went there to start off cycling around South America. And uh, you know Michael Benteen? Uh, we've heard of Michael Benteen, you have yes. Heard of and him? we know him, and he's sat in that chair, yes. Terrific. Yeah, it's not, it's still, pr probably still warm from last time you saw him. <laughs> well, and Michael said to me, You can't go to Peru on a bicycle, you're crazy. Because you've got all those mountains, and then you've got all the jungle in eastern Peru. But he said, If you do go, do pop down into the jungle and say hi to an old cobra, his da uh, friend. Sorry, cobra, I don't know if anybody understands that. Uh, we'll uh, say it again slowly. To go and say hello to an old cobra. Cobra. Yes. Of his down in the jungle. That means a friend or a mate, does it? Yes. Right. It's yes. a down under expression. Right. And uh, he said, go and say hi to him from Michael Benteen. So I said, right here, yeah, I'll do that. So I went over the Andes, down the other side. On your bike? Yes. Uh, up the highest I've ever been, uh, 16,890 feet. Which is a lot. You keep looking up there. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Are there roads there, or do you, or do you oh, sort of yes. make your way through? Roads, mm. yes. They're pretty rough, and they're mostly one way. All the uh, down-going traffic, this is the rule of the road, the down-going traffic, because sometimes it's going like this, the road, you know, uh, has to back up until it's wide enough for the upcoming traffic to pass. Because, you see, if the upgoing traffic backs, it might go right over the bank, which could be a 3,000 drop. So uh, they're mostly one-way roads and are pretty terrific and very bumpy, but there are roads, yes. And what do, what do sort of lorry drivers and passengers in, in cars and things think or do or say or shout or indicate when they see a lone lady on a bicycle going up and down the Andes? Well, they don't really quite believe it. They shout a lot of things which uh, mostly I didn't understand, which perhaps is just as well. I don't know. If you don't understand, then how, you, how do you know it's perhaps just as well? Well, maybe it's not. Because a lot of the folk were really terrific. I had a dear little old lady met me on the road one time, and she had a great big bag on her back. How she carried it, I don't know. But she had some, something like a passion fruit, gorgeous things. they are uh, got a pale green cover on this fruit, and then when you cut you it the open... Skin? Yeah, the skin. Uh, and when you cut it open, it's a, a ooky grey looking inside, sort of like cotton wool. Ooky. Grey <laughs> cotton wool. <laughs> but it's delicious and very, very juicy. And she gave me three or four of these and sort of said, you know, more or less to help you on your way. What are they, these ooky green things? Well, I call them passion fruit. They're <laughs> 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 well, like passion fruit. They've got seeds like right. passion fruits right. anyway. Right. Mm. You are quite an extraordinary sort of bouncy mm. mixture of, uh, of things. I mean, do you just up and go whenever you feel like going somewhere? Well, sort of. I mean, uh, I have to have some, uh, some idea of where I'm going, and uh, I need to have some sort of arrangements made, a collection of a visa, get a ticket to get How there. How do you finance yourself? Uh, well, I s sort of work, most sort of work. I do nursing, mostly either at home in New Zealand or over here in London, are the two basic places where I work for money. 
a uh, lot of the other places, countries that I've been to, I've done work, but it's usually voluntary nursing where you get to keep. You know, I can get my food and a bed to sleep in. And Are you happy? Terrific. You should try it. It's absolutely fabulous. <laughs> you know, it's the... Well, you and me on a tandem. That'd be a good... That'd be a good... <laughs> mm, yeah. You'd have to go on the front, then, because that's the hardest part of a tandem, you know that. Yeah. Have you ever been on a tandem with anybody? No, I've never tried one. Never tried one. We should, do you think we should try no, one? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> now, there we, now, there we're going to look at the bike you're going mm -hmm. on. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very ordinary bike, isn't it? What do you mean, ordinary? I think it's a beautiful well, bicycle. I, I beg your pardon. It's a beautiful yes, ordinary sir. bicycle, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. And what, like what, it? I do like it. Mm -hmm. what, what has it got on it that will help you across? Uh, well, pedals and two wheels. I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean that you've got bike things for things like water and special. Yes, that's stuff. specially put on, and I've got a wee cycle meter and so on that's specially put on. Otherwise, that bike's just exactly as anybody would go into a bike shop and buy it. And why do we? Why do wheels? That yes, but that particular model has those wide wheels. Mister Peugeot gave me that. All right, Did you think uh, he's terrific? terrific. Yes, I'm mm. sure. I'm sure he's got his models look out of that too. Now that you, you have a, there's a map somewhere. Have we have we looked at the map yet? There is a map which we're going to look at over there it, of the route Vega, which seems to be one hell of a long distance. It's nearly four, four, four and a half thousand miles, is it? Well, it's going right across into Peru. Yes. Yeah, and you're starting there down at a place down called uh, what? Belém there. Yes. Then you come down that line and then turn right and then shoot right across south, yes. south of northern part of South America. And then there's that wee bit that goes up to Manaos there. Yeah, and then you're going up there mm -hmm. and then back down again, mm -hmm. down that, and then back onto the onto, onto the, main the road. other road. What see? danger will you be in at, at any time there? Do you know? danger i would think mostly uh, weather conditions and perhaps uh, mosquitoes or things that bite like that and sometimes this road might disappear well i don't know if it will disappear completely but you can get landslides which can be quite severe but with a bicycle you see even if there's a landslide uh, you can make a sort of a track through mm. the slide. Well, that, there's a picture, you see, which there is hacked right through the jungle, isn't mm. it? I mean, it's a straight yes, river right through, right through the mm. jungle. Now, and is it made up? Is it tar macadam? Is it sort of... No, no, it's, it's mostly dust. Well, it's mud in the rainy season and dust in the dry season. Usually, I'm going in the dry season because I think that will be easier to get through than trying to plough through a lot of mud. Where, where will you stay nights? Oh, well, yeah, in villages if I strike them or just camp out. In the open, in the open sky, yes. with the moon above. I've got to get a tent and a sleeping bag, and I've been advised about actually a hammock. I believe you can get new hammocks now with a little roof on it and with mosquito netting. Sounds terrific, doesn't it? All mud string it up between two trees. All you know? mud cones. Yeah, well, you've got plenty of trees there, mate. Yes. I'll tell you that. Mm. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> what about if somebody gets hold of you in the middle of the night? Robbers, pirates. Well, I mean, it's dark. They won't know I'm there. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you see, if they don't know I'm there, how can they get a hold of me? Has anybody ever got hold of you, anyway? In, at night? No. Yeah. Not at night. Uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> Well, not like that, anyway. <laughs> but in India, you had, a, you had a brush. Yes, well, that was in the daytime, yes. That was, uh, I was... <laughs> you could see what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I was attacked in India. It was the dacoits. They're the uh, sort of bandits. But I was, um, it was rather a frightening experience, I must admit. Tell me. Well, um, they were in a truck, and uh, they kept passing me and then stopping and pretending there was something in the engine, you see, and as I cycled past, and of course I couldn't go off the road, there was nowhere else to go. And I thought, what the dickens are they playing at? And then eventually they stopped and they came over and they grabbed the bike and grabbed a hold of me and threw the bike on the road and ho hoisted me into the trees at the side, and I think the idea was to <laughs> do me in and uh, take the bicycle and my belongings. I had a little trailer uh, but just then, the um, twice weekly bus came along, so I was pretty fortunate. At that can... precise moment? Yes. You have a lot of luck on your side, don't I've you? I've got a pretty good guardian angel. Oh, you have indeed, mm. you have indeed. And, and to, to, you, you do sort of magical things to finance yourself. You, what about in, in New York when you were short of money? You, you, you volunteered for a quiz show on television. Well, I was asked to go on the, the program. I'd booked on the ship because uh, I thought, well, I've got to get back to this country somehow from New York, and I had no idea how I was going to pay for it. So I thought, well, have faith, lass. 
You'll get there somehow. So I booked the passage to make sure, you see. And then it was four days before she was due to sail that uh, I was invited to go on to this quiz program. And that was rather fun, um, because it, we're on television now, aren't we? Uh, oh, we hope <coughs> are, we Yes. <laughs> no, you know how you have this sort of warm-up thing beforehand? Well, over there, there were three or four folk on the program, and the man came out, and he said, well, the program is done like this, you know, you're asked questions such as such and such and such and such. He'd ask us a question, and the answer to that would be, and we'd all tell him what we thought the answer was, fine, right here. And he gave us several examples and so on, and he said, that's what it's like. And when uh, we went on the program, each one, one at a time, he'd given us our first questions. Ah. So you see, we all knew the answers ah. for the first question ah. on the program, uh -huh. which I thought was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and you won money on that? I did, yes. Just enough. The boat fare for myself and the bike and the trailer was $182, and on the program I won $200. That's terrific. So how's that for fate? Terrific. Wonder what'll happen after this program. <laughs> <laughs> Brazil now. <laughs> you know, you're a little cracker. You really are a little cracker. I've never met anybody like you in a long time. What, what do you, I mean, do you take anything for all this balance and energy that you've got? Uh, I, I've never noticed the balance and energy. Um, you're full of energy. Anything. Mm, I mean, do you, do you, I know you've smoked hashish. I tried it once, yes. That's wonderful. Mm. You went to a wedding. That's right. Yes, that was uh, in the Middle East. Mm. Yes, that was quite interesting, isn't it? I tried it once to see what it was like, but it wasn't for me. I got sick afterwards. I thought, no, thank you. You did. Mm. Well, now you've got your body into trim, and what you're going to do with this precisely is to hop on your bike and set off from the studio towards the Trans-Amazonian Highway. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that means you'll have to turn left at the South Bank. <laughs> <laughs> Go over Westminster Bridge and then turn left, and you just keep going straight on, you'll get to the Trans-Amazonian Highway. Eventually. Eventually. Yes, I've got to get across the water first. Well, you'll do it. You have great intrepidity, and thank you very much for telling us about your adventure. And I hope, we, we all do, wish you the, the most amazing luck. I hope nobody attacks you. I hope nothing bites you. I hope the sun shines upon you. You're a little cracker. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And both my eyes.